Hello, everybody, and welcome to Iceberg To Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from by searching Tip of the Iceberg. Evgeny Malkin is coming off of a rough final period against the Vegas Golden Knights. That might be an understatement. The whole team in and of itself looked out of sorts. Let's get that on the table first and foremost. But Malkin's glaring mistakes ended up taking center stage in that game and in a lot of the discourse surrounding that game following over the past 24 to 48 hours. He's received a lot of hate on social media. He's received a lot of hate when it comes to the media, including me. I went after him in my post-game recap on Sunday morning, and a lot of that was, in my opinion, warranted for that performance in particular. But I wanted to take a much closer look at Evgeny Malkin's season to this point when judging where they should go in the future. Was this, obviously, when you look at the eye test, we've seen Evgeny Malkin struggle at times this season. We've seen Evgeny Malkin fall into some old habits at times this season. And we've seen Evgeny Malkin, as Mike Sullivan talked about yesterday at following practice at the Mullet Arena, we've seen him try to overcompensate at certain points for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that's not something that is within the scope of his capabilities at this point of his career. So I wanted to take a deeper look at how Malkin has performed this season to kind of judge where I think the Pittsburgh Penguins should go from here with their Hall of Fame center. The overall point production for him isn't much different. Right now he is on pace for 71 points, 29 of those being goals, which, small little side story here, if he stays on this current pace, He'd reach 500 goals for his career this season. Huge milestone would be a great achievement for Evgeny Malkin, but more to the point right now is that he's finishing at a very, very high rate. When you look at his shooting percentage in and of itself in all situations, it doesn't look that drastic. It doesn't look anything spectacular. It's at 13%, which is average not just for the NHL, but average for Evgeny Malkin throughout his career. What gets interesting is when you change that to 5-on-5 shooting percentage. Evgeny Malkin, as we'll get to, has struggled to produce on the power play. The whole power play has struggled to produce, which has forced a lot of these guys to make a lot of their hay this season at 5-on-5. Evgeny Malkin is no different. His 5-on-5 shooting percentage right now is at 17.2%, which would be the second highest of his career if he's able to continue this throughout the remainder of the season. Not only that, but he's also shooting much more often this season. So it's interesting because this comes to the detriment of his line mates. And a lot of the discussion surrounding Evgeny Malkin has been his line mates, as we'll get into. Ricard Raquel started the season with Evgeny Malkin to one of the worst starts of his entire career. 17 games, zero goals, four assists. He goes on the shelf, comes back, and when he comes back, he's placed with Sidney Crosby and has played pretty well ever since. Produced pretty well as well. Riley Smith started very well on Malkin's wing, and you thought, okay, this is a carryover from last season. Riley Smith had 26 to 28 goals. I can't remember off the top of my head. And he had 50-plus points. So you think, okay, he came in, instant chemistry, great. You're going to get an upgrade from what you had in Jason Zucker. Well, after a four-point performance in San Jose, Riley Smith's production falls off a cliff. And the one common denominator, as I mentioned on Sunday morning, has to be Evgeny Malkin in this because he is the center, he is the facilitator, he is the leader of that line, and these players are coming to his line and struggling to continue to perform the way that they had for Raquel's case last season, for Riley Smith's case last season, and even earlier in this season for Riley Smith. And then, of course, you look at Raquel, what he's done at the more recent portion of this season. So my initial reaction was Evgeny Malkin is the common denominator. Evgeny Malkin might be the issue. And that's not an entirely incorrect opinion. But the thing is, he's just not trying to facilitate as much as he has in the past. He's shooting. He's electing to take things into his own hands. And as... Mike Sullivan said he's trying to do too much. Now, in the offensive zone, that's his bread and butter. So trying to do too much in the offensive zone, sometimes he can get away with it because he's an extremely talented offensive player at the NHL level. And as we're seeing, career high or second best in the career shooting percentage, he's finishing at a very high rate at even strength. 
but it's coming at the detriment of some of his line mates. So you have to find that perfect match for Evgeny Malkin. The players, they're going to be able to take care of their opportunities when they're given them by Evgeny Malkin, but also able to support Malkin to pick up rebound goals, to be in the positions, to take advantage of the opportunities that this year's Evgeny Malkin will afford them. And in that, you look at what he has right now. And I think what he has right now is the best pair of line mates that he's had all season long in Drew O'Connor and Brian Rust. It is a small sample size, only 58 minutes at even strength so far this season. But out of five primary combinations for Evgeny Malkin this season when it comes to his line mates, it's OC and Rust, which is who he's currently with. He's had OC and Riley Smith. For a period of time, he's had Riley Smith and Brian Rust for a period of time. He obviously started with Smith and Raquel for the first 17 games of the season. And then another one that he had a little bit of time with was Riley Smith and Valtteri Pustinen. So of those five primary uh, combinations, excuse me, this is offensively the second, or sorry, the best second line the Penguins have put together. Right now averaging 4.1 goals per 60 minutes. So this is offensively the best. And you look at defensively, it's middle of the road for these guys. Third best defensively or defensive combination of the second line of the five. 2.1 goals allowed per 60 minutes. Only behind the Riley Smith and Valtteri Pustin and the Drew O'Connor and Riley Smith combinations. So defensively, it seems, or just in general, it seems like Drew O'Connor has really helped Evgeny Malkin. And I get it. He's not helped him to the level of, oh, he's making Evgeny Malkin better, but he's helped him to the level of they're meshing well together so far. So I like what the Penguins have done with Drew O'Connor, Brian Rust, and Evgeny Malkin. To me, I think that's the line you have to rock with to find success and to get Malkin back to the level that you need him to be at. The other thing that's changed for Evgeny Malkin this season has been his deployment. He is the lowest amount of offensive zone faceoffs since 2014-15. It seems like most of the time, the Pittsburgh Penguins get into the offensive zone, get a draw in the offensive zone, whether that be off of an icing, whether that be off of the goaltender stopping the puck and shutting everything down. It goes to Sidney Crosby and his line. Makes a lot of sense. Considering his percentage of the Penguins' offense, Jake Gensel's percentage of the Penguins' offense is drastically higher than it has been in seasons past. These two as we all know, are carrying the Pittsburgh Penguins. So that is taking away opportunities from Evgeny Malkin in the offensive zone. That is, as we've talked about in the past, having Evgeny Malkin play a little bit more of a responsible defensive game than he has in the past. So that's also taking away a little bit. So when Malkin has less opportunities and he's taking more opportunities for himself, that's why you have the issues, as we've alluded to, with his line mates coming to his line and struggling a little bit. The other issue that I'll talk about before we move on, the power play. It's the biggest issue for the Pittsburgh Penguins all season long. It's the biggest issue in Evgeny Malkin's game all season long. Right now, he is on pace for 22 to 23 power play points this season. That would be the second lowest 82-game pace that he has had in the last decade. The only other time that he's been under 30 Right now he's on pace for 22.9. The only other time he's been on pace for under 30 points on the power play in an 82-game sample size, 2020-21, the bubble year, 22.4 points. Every other year is above 30 points. Evgeny Malkin's biggest issue right now is his performance on the power play, and I get it. Maybe that's very simple, plain and simple for you to see. It is very evident when you watch the game and the eye test as well. But things just aren't working with him and Eric Carlson. Something isn't meshing between those two. And I think this is where we see Malkin, quote, trying to do too much most of the time. I mentioned it yesterday. Mike Sullivan addressed Malkin's performance after practice in Arizona. This was his exact quote. Quote, he is so talented often, just some of the inconsistencies in his game are more without the puck and just trying to do too much. I think he's trying to do too much instead of just doing his job and allowing his teammates to do theirs. When you think about what happened at the end of the game in Vegas, he is overexerting himself, 
getting out of position in the defensive zone to go try to make a play on the puck carrier instead of trusting on the game-winning goal, it was Eric Carlson. On the other goals, it was the players that were going up and trying to make the play on the puck carrier. He's watching the puck instead of watching the remainder of the zone. He's losing that awareness of where that third guy in is going to be. And when you look at the game-winning goal, it played out in real time. Ivan Barbashev enters the zone, stops up. Eric Carlson goes towards him to try to take away the passing lane. Brett Howden chooses to cross in front of Evgeny Malkin and drive the net. Marcus Pedersen has to cover him and pushes back. That leaves Evgeny Malkin having to look for that third guy. Instead, he zeroes in on the puck carrier, goes after Ivan Barbashev, and leaves the middle of the ice wide open. The puck goes to Brendan Brisson, who should have been covered by Malkin. Sidney Crosby's coming into the zone late, not able to catch up to the third guy in. And there's the game winner for the Vegas Golden Knights. Evgeny Malkin trying to overcompensate in the defensive zone leads to a game winner for the Vegas Golden Knights and leads to probably a lot of this discourse, a lot of this discussion. He does it on the power play too. He does it on the power play too. He either makes the short pass to Carlson to try to get things going, to try to pick up some momentum, or he tries to force that cross-ice pass that, yes, in the past he has done. He does have the talent to make that pass, to go tape to tape across the ice, between guys' legs and over guys' sticks, but it's a low percentage play right now. And it's a play that is even lower percentage with the power play as discombobulated as it has been. He struggled with keep-ins, and the breakout is not something I'm going to put on Evgeny Malkin. Obviously, he is a main part of the breakout. He's a main piece and cog in the Penguins' power play breakout, but the breakout has been broken for years. That I put on Todd Reardon. That I don't put on Evgeny Malkin. I just don't think that breakout as a scheme is a good scheme in general. So, you look at Evgeny Malkin's issues. Yes, he's trying to do too much. Mike Sullivan said as much. You can see it when you watch the games. He's trying to do too much. He's been tasked with a little bit more on the defensive zone. But I think when you look at the line mates that he has right now, he has Drew O'Connor, who is touted for his two-way play. He has Brian Rust, who is touted for his two-way play. He has to trust these guys. And he has to trust the defense as well. You look at that game-winning goal, I don't know if it's that he didn't trust Eric Carlson on that, but he certainly thought that him going over there would have shut down the play a lot easier. It just didn't. Because what it left open was Brendan Brisson, a young guy with a great shot, and Yvonne Barbashev made a great pass to get it past those two guys. And if that pass goes through, it's usually a goal. And it ended up hurting the Pittsburgh Penguins in that game. So that self-inflicted pressure that seems to be on Evgeny Malkin's shoulders is the biggest issue with his eye test. Causes him to be out of position. It looks like he's chasing the game. Sometimes he takes a bad penalty, which also happened late against the Vegas Golden Knights. It directly links to the rest of the weaknesses that he's had this season. Struggling to keep and carry the momentum on the power plays. Issues setting up his line mates for premium scoring of chances. His his facilitation and assist numbers are down. It's all because he's trying to do too much. So again, if Mike Sullivan's right, and listen, Mike Sullivan watches this guy play and has watched this guy play every day for the last seven, eight seasons. If that can get through Malkin's head, then maybe this gets fixed. And why is it important? Because the Pittsburgh Penguins... Can't get to where they want without Evgeny Malkin this season. They're not going to trade for a second-line center and move Evgeny Malkin to the wing. They're not going to trade for a second-line center and move Evgeny Malkin down to the third line. They're not going to move him down in general simply because they don't have a a second-line center capable guy on the roster in the organization right now. They just don't. They need Evgeny Malkin. But the Evgeny Malkin we've seen of late won't get them there either. The Penguins need Malkin to stay more even keel and play within his normal scope of performance. Control what he can control. Control the controllables, as Mike Tomlin says to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's what they need from Evgeny Malkin. Doesn't need to overcompensate. Doesn't need to do stuff that he's never done before. And you see exactly what is happening with with Sidney Crosby. Yes, he is carrying the team on his back. He is playing and performing so far above the standard that most 36-year-olds play. 
that he's getting national headlines, he's getting acclaim, he's getting praise from every single corner of the hockey universe. Evgeny Malkin doesn't need to be that. He doesn't need to match Sidney Crosby. He just needs to play Evgeny Malkin's game. It might be oversimplistic, excuse me, but that's what it is. Everything I've said here, all of these little micro stats and smaller stats that I've looked up, all leads to the same thing. Evgeny Malkin still has the talent. He just needs to play a game a little bit smarter. Play within himself and not try to do too much, as Mike Sullivan said. Doesn't need to overcompensate for the Penguins' issues, because when he does that, he makes more issues for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They need Evgeny Malkin to be the Evgeny Malkin you saw last year. He wasn't overcompensating, and yes, in his head, maybe that meant, all right, I didn't overcompensate, and we didn't make the playoffs. I need to overcompensate. No. Play your game. You have the line now in place that has been the most successful that it has been all season. You have the line mates that you can trust in both the offensive and defensive zones. Just go out there and play your game. Don't try to do too much, as Mike Sullivan said. I love that, and I think that it's exactly what the Penguins need. We'll see if that plays out tonight against the Arizona Coyotes, and if not, the Penguins have two games in the next two weeks. They have a game, I believe it's Friday and Sunday, and then they won't play again until after their bye week and after the All-Star game. So we'll see where it goes from here. But as of right now, they need more from Evgeny Malkin, but not in the sense of they need him to overcompensate. They just need him to play his game. It's as simple as that. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was a it was a step back from what I did in the game recap on Sunday morning. That was a little bit more raw. That was a little bit more focused in on his performance in that third period, which was awful. He knows it. He came out and said it yesterday. They need more even keel from Evgeny Malkin, and I'm excited to see if that's what they get here in the last 39 games of the season. Should be a fun 39 to watch. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from by searching Tip of the Iceberg. We'll see you guys next time.